This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. Our last chapter is Chapter 6, and Chapter 6 is on quadratics. A quadratic is when the highest exponent is 2. And whenever the highest exponent is 2, you can have two answers. So in Chapter 6, you want to make sure you get both answers. To solve by factoring, it kind of tells you what to do. We need to factor. But this cannot be factored yet. Please don't forget, step one is you cannot factor until you get this set equal to zero. We need all of the terms to be on one side. So before you can do anything else, let's subtract 13x. And that way this will be equal to zero. And all three of these other terms are on the same side. Then it looks like a beautiful trinomial, and we can factor this. So set it equal to zero, then you're allowed to factor. To factor three terms, we can go ahead and fill in the x times x, because that's how you get x squared. When you distribute, x times x is x squared. Then we have to find numbers that multiply to the third one and add to the middle. We need things that add to C, I'm sorry, add to B and multiply to C. So let's figure out what multiplies to positive 30, the signs have to match, and add to negative 13. There's lots of things that multiply to 30. Here's where you have to be very careful. This one looks like it has two options. I cannot get a 13 from these choices, but both of these look like they could work, but only one does. For example, if you think it's negative 15 and positive 2, even though that does add to negative 13, those do not multiply to positive 30. If it was negative, that would be it, but that's not the choice here. It's going to have to be negative 3 and negative 10. There's only one correct option each time, and it doesn't matter which one you write first, as long as you have a negative 10 and a negative 3. The last step of the factoring method is called the zero product property, and you take each factor, and you set each factor equal to zero and solve. Again, don't forget you get two answers. So my first factor is x minus 10, so I'll set that equal to zero. Then I'll take the x minus 3 and set that equal to zero and solve one at a time here. So just two separate equations. Add 10 to both sides to solve this one. So one answer is x equals 10, and the other answer, add 3 to both sides, and you should get x equals 3. On the final, I would beg of you to check your answer. This way, if you messed up your factoring, or you made the wrong choice, or had an incorrect sign, you would know. You can always check. Example, just go back to the original. You could do it quickly in a calculator. But if you plug a 10 back in to the original, the left side should equal the right. If this doesn't work, don't choose it. But here we would get 100 plus 30 equals 130. That works. So I feel super confident that this is correct. Let's move on to the next one. You could also check the 3. But again, check your answers. Plug them back into the original. Here's another factoring problem. Very similar. We still need it set equal to 0, and this one already is. So we are all set to factor. This one, the a value is not 1. There's a number in front. So because of this 4 here, we can't just start like the last problem and fill in the x's x times x doesn't equal 4x squared. This is where our book did the AC method. Maybe you use the Columbian method, slide and divide, 
X factor. There's a lot of ways to do these, and they're all awesome. But I'm going to do the textbook way, which is 4 times negative 3. I think it makes sense. The AC method is to multiply A times C. Then you go ahead and pick out your two numbers like always. You need them to multiply to negative 12. And we still want them to add to the middle term of 4. So I'm thinking I'm going to be using 2 and 6. Because negative 2 plus 6 is 4. And those multiply to my negative 12. So from there, to finish this, I think it makes sense that since these equal 4, I'm going to replace the 4x in the middle with the two numbers I chose. I'm going to turn the 4x into a negative 2x plus 6x. So you replace the middle with the two numbers you picked, because then you can chop it in half and factor one side at a time, and we'll get our answer. On the left side, these two are both divisible by 2, and they both have an x. The GCF is 2x, so I'm going to take that out. Then I will divide, and what's left goes inside the parentheses here. Now you might be tempted to cross this out and put a zero, but anything divided by itself is 1. Again, you can always distribute to check your factoring. Factoring and distributing are opposites. On the right side, you leave the sign in front the same, and these are both divisible by 3. I know my factoring is correct so far, because with the AC method, you should always get a match here. And then the trick is that whatever the match is, that's one of your factors, and the two outside terms make up the other. So basically, I'm taking out and factoring out a 2x minus 1, and if you factor that out, it leaves a 2x plus 3. But there's our two factors. You could FOIL, for example, 2x times 2x does equal the original 4x squared. Everything matches up if you FOIL. And the last step of factoring is to take each factor and set it equal to zero. And we'll solve these one at a time. You should get fractions, and that's perfectly fine. To solve for x here, I would add one to both sides. And then divide by two. So one half is one answer. You can plug that in with a calculator to check. And the other side, I need to subtract 3 and then divide by 2. So make sure you have a negative for this one. The other answer is negative 3 over 2. Two answers. Last factoring question. You cannot factor until you have the equation equal to 0. No factoring until all of the terms are on one side. This one only has two terms. Since there is nothing in common, they do not have a GCF. Whenever you have two terms and everything is a square, this is a difference of squares. That's what you look for when you've got two terms. A difference of squares, it only works if you have subtraction. Difference means subtraction, and we do here. 25 is 5 squared. We also have x squared. 121 is 11 squared. I think these are the easiest because the numbers are exactly the same. One of each sign. Again, you could FOIL to check and make sure you do get 25x squared minus 121. Once you have this factor, you set each factor equal to 0. And we'll solve and get our two answers. So for one side, I will subtract the 11. We're just solving for x. To get the x by itself, we divide. So I get negative 11 fifths 
And when I solve the other equation, it's similar, but we add 11 to both sides and divide by 5, so this one is positive. Since the factors are the same, one of each sign, our answers are also the same, one of each sign. And again, you can always plug your answers back in to check. To check it, you would do something like this, 25 plug in x squared, and it should equal 121. And that's something you could put in the calculator as a quick check so you're confident you have the right choice. After factoring, we learned another way to solve a quadratic. It's called the square root method. So look for the directions. They really tell you what to do. We still get two answers because the highest exponent is 2. The square root method is we're going to go ahead and start solving for x, just like if it was any other equation. We want the x by itself, so I'm still going to add 3 to both sides. The official step, they say, isolate the square. Find whatever is being squared and get it all by itself. And here I just did that. Now the whole thing here, the square value, is all alone on one side. Because the next thing I need to do is get rid of the square. And to get rid of a square, you square root. Because squares and square roots are opposites, they cancel each other out. The most important thing in 6.2 is whenever you take a square root, you must put a plus or minus sign in front. If you forget that, you won't get two answers. You'll only get one. Square roots have two possible answers, a positive one and a negative one. You can review that in 6.2. So after I square root, I still need to solve for x. So we'll continue by subtracting 2 from both sides. And be careful. We have 5x equals, and these are not like terms. Do not subtract the 7 and the 2. One is a radical, one is not, so we just leave them separate. We've got a minus 2 and a plus or minus radical 7. The last step then is to divide by 5, and I know it looks a little goofy, but that's as much as we can do. Your answer is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7, all divided by 5. Nothing is a like term. 7 doesn't simplify as a radical. Nothing's divisible. This is it. Final answer.